Jonathan Beaver was actually a musician too. Absolutely. And, um, when I started um, becoming a member of, of Axis, when we had these dinners, John Jonathan Beaver was actually the opening performer. Yep. And um, you know he would play um, his acoustic guitar and and, his, and play his songs and stuff. So. Um, it's always just want to do a remembrance for him and um, always just mention the fact that um, whenever I'm doing any playing up here, he's always up here with us. So, um, you know, they say like to keep his memory alive, he stays alive too. So, um, that's all I have to say. So, I'm like I say, we'll do some plans. It's like he's always up here anyway. Okay, thank you. All right. All right. So not only was my friend Jonathan a musician, he was also a playwright. And um, he was very into uh, literature. He, when I was homeless, um, I spent some time reading <laughs> books that he would tell me that, that would impress my life, like Emily Dickinson and things that I'd never really discovered until he took me there. Um, and when I was homeless, it was really nice. We'd wake up sometimes in the morning and, and Miles Davis would already be, be playing uh, the album Red Clay. Uh, he introduced me to that and, um, wow, you know, a poet, a scholar, and a gentleman. And there's, there's not a lot of folks that really live up to all three of those, but he definitely does. Um, I am going to ask people to keep uh, the noise down in the food line so that folks can do their remembrance. And um, I know my friend Melody wanted to come up and say a few words in remembrance of Jonathan Beaver. I met Jonathan when I was 19. We were sitting on Hippie Hill with a bunch of people I just met. I came to San Francisco for the first time up from Santa Cruz. And I didn't know who the Grateful Dead were. <laughs> and they couldn't believe this little girl from Canada didn't know who the Grateful Dead was. So, mine is to say, nine drops later in front of Phil Dush's amp, I found out who the Grateful Dead were. <laughs> Jonathan is always part of those first memories of mine being introduced to San Francisco, being a native San Francisco. He came from a really good family, but he loved the street. He was hurt pretty bad in his life, and he never really talked about it, but those of us who knew felt blessed that he trusted us enough to confide in us. Um, a lot of people don't know he used to work for the diggers and feed a lot of people in San Francisco. Thank you. And um, I'm really glad you had the dinner today because he really would have loved that. I went to Hippie Hill yesterday and it's the first time since I've been to Hippie Hill since 1977, on and off, that I haven't seen Jonathan there. So um, he was a really special person to a lot of us then. He's going to be really great in this. Thank you, Melody.
I just uh, thanked Melody for reminding me of Jonathan's devotion to sharing food. Um, the Diggers were a group, you know, from the late 60s on that um, took a re revolutionary stance on feeding people. And Jonathan definitely introduced a lot of us in this room to sharing food and the necessity of doing that as often and as best as you can. Um, so I do think he would be very happy today to know how much uh, food we're sharing in his remembrance and will continue throughout this year. Um, I wanted to see if there was anyone else who would like to share uh, their remembrance of Jonathan Bieber. Uh, here's Psychic Frank. Uh, hi. I was mentioning, uh, as I said, uh, I couldn't get anything said. I couldn't get anything said. It was just his time. He, he was through. He was through with that school. He was going. But I was thinking of, uh, he would always tell me this joke that it was like over and over again. And we'd laugh over and over again. So he'd say, uh, what did the Buddha say the hot dog vendor? I, go, I don't know, Jonathan. He said, maybe one with everything. <laughs> <laughs> so now he's one with everything. <laughs> he's always around. And, uh, you know, I remember when I first met him 15 years ago at Champs, and they would have the talent. I think after three times he won, they wouldn't let him participate anymore because he was so good. He was so good. He was, uh, and then, as I said, you know, hard life. I found out the other day that um, it's not longevity and good health doesn't depend on your biological the gene, oh, uh, gene code. It depends on your zip code. Yep. You know, so it depends on where you live. And poor people, it's thank God we live here. But uh, poor people like us in the rest of the world ain't got it too good. So I usually, according to the Tibetan Book of the Dead, it takes 49 days to make the journey to the other side. So usually after 49 days, I'll do a tarot card reading about it. But I'm sure he's on the journey with his guitar. I just like seeing him right now with his guitar on his back. And uh, he always had a great smile, and he wouldn't want anybody to be sad. He wanted us to celebrate his life. He was, that's what he was all about. And he's one with everything now. <laughs> I guess the thing I remember most was when uh, I think everybody was uh, protesting the war in Iraq. It was the first one, and they shut down the city. It just happened. And Jonathan took me to my first rally. And it was great. Uh, the thing was, I didn't go the first day, but it was so big they'd shut down the city. Yep. And by the time we had got there, uh, Market Street was just empty, and there must have been like 200 cop cars, man, just all, all the way up to Venice and down. And we were just in this broken down truck, and we just owned the city. <laughs> Me and Jonathan. And I went the next day. But it was a great feeling to like just own the city. It was just empty. The whole city was like empty, and we're just driving down. And he was just such a great like human being. He was such a really great activist, you know. And, and he had so much love, man. He was such a, such a kind. Do you mind if I play a little? Do you care? I want to hear from John. I don't mind. I'm sure. Jonathan Bieber here in the city, 
there's going to be a free potluck. Right in front of City Hall, where Jonathan Beaver always worked, <laughs> and free, no charge, and it's every year. He just said, gather my people and give away food. So that's my remembrance of Jonathan Beaver, a free spirit who liked to give away free food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think there's a long, long, long uh, history of activism for us to unravel in the years to come about Jonathan's path. Um, and he was also, you know, very active um, and was part of the working group that created uh, the Medical Canada Cannabis Task Force. He voted on the working group from the Harvey Milk uh, Club uh, Cannabis uh, Caucus, which he was on with me. And um, then he ran for the senior seat uh, and was not even heard by the Rules Committee. They just decided that, you know, they wouldn't genocide us, um, which was kind of irritating to say the least. So we have many battles to fight uh, this year with Jonathan's spirit uh, at our, our sales. Uh, uh, hello, sir. You know, Jonathan was one of those special people that you meet, that you say hello to him, and you look him in the eye, and you don't have to say anymore to him, because you knew he was far more superior than you were. And he had this quiet tranquility in himself. Yeah. Like he was analyzing every move he made. <laughs> and he was. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember one of the stories I got from John. His sister called him. She was in New York. And she said, oh, my, my, my Jaguar is frozen. And John said, no shit. Because <laughs> <laughs> I knew he was so significant icon that will never be replaced. That we're losing these icons in San Francisco and the Hagen. An era, a significant person that represents an era of freedom, equal rights, you know, and the movements of all sorts. And it, it's a, you know, we have to remember these icons because they're the significant ones that led the way, and they 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 made a path for us to follow. And Jonathan was definitely one of those people, and yeah. I know you can all relate. When I say, I don't want to go, I don't want to go, I don't want to go back to the city. Yeah. <laughs>
that was Sir Jonathan Bieber himself with his anthem, Cannabis Nation, which uh, we, we are going to be working on a video project to, uh, to kind of make a nice montage to that with all of his different activism in cannabis. And um, the interesting thing is, he did live to see two states actually legalized, so that was nice. And um, I just want to uh, really thank everybody for coming together today. Um, it's really important that um, we carry on his legacy in our actions and in our uh, relations to each other. And um, I never met such a, a very clear and honest and caring person. And um, I can't say enough about missing him, but it's not a missing that's a longing because he is so uh, transcendental and psychedelic that I don't have to worry about him uh, not uh, being right here in spirit. Is there anyone else who'd like to offer any uh, remembrance? Yes. <laughs> I heard someone say my name. Ah, Frederick would like to come up and, and, and say something. Okay, Frederick and Sandra are going to come up for a moment. And, um... Come on, come on. All right, so. <laughs> so I'm, I'm Frederick. Proud of her. I love Jonathan. I met him first at 350 with Randy, actually, who left back in the day. And I know him for his musicianship. That's when I first met him. I think it was the guitar and the piano or keyboards. But we're going to sing a song. Go ahead. Did you want to say something? No, I'm protection. No. First of all, I want to thank the Holy Spirit that's in this place right now. Um, Jonathan's behalf. He was awesome. So we're going to sing something that we know that he would want for us to sing. It's a rough version. <laughs> Go for it. Sometimes in our lives we all have pain, we all have sorrow. It won't be long till I'm gonna need somebody to lean on. Well, my 
Melody was born on 11:20 uh, at 21:40. He was weighing at seven pounds three ounces. Robert Oyak Turner. Oh, we were in this TV studio when he was born, sir. So what a mitzvah, what a blessing. We have little Robert Oyak Turner here, and let's all send some love to, to his mother, Melissa, because that's uh, definitely having your first child is something to go through, <laughs> for both mom and dad, I'm sure. She looked great today. She did look great today, and the thing that I've noticed is like the absolute afterglow that people have the week after their baby comes. They're like when Bobby came into the to my house, I swear to God, your face was like all glowing, like you had had the baby. <laughs> oh, I know, but not literally, not literally. <laughs> so, um, what a happy thing to 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 end the remembrance ceremony on as a beginning ceremony and the beginnings of life and the hopes and the wishes for your son who I know is going to be a great bearer of light for for the communities that he chooses to be in and I know you're going to be an awesome father Melissa's going to be an awesome mother and to be born to people that love you is just such an awesome thing so I really want to thank you guys for parenting and, and bringing a, a sweet bundle of joy. I saw him for like two seconds at the center today while I was running through bitching up a storm about getting this all together. I'm like, oh, there's a baby. Yeah. <laughs> it was horrible. <laughs> I can't wait till I actually get to relax and sit down and, and hold him. I'll bring him uh, to the center one day. You bring him to the center one day. How about tomorrow? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, he has an appointment tomorrow. He's booked tomorrow.